Hi, just a quick follow up on this uh, Fleur E4 um, thermal imaging camera. Um, the marginal review, I was a little bit, little bit dismissive of this sort of high, we want your feedback thing uh, stuff, but um, I sent them a uh, link to the review and they sort of agreed on a few points and um, bounced a few emails uh, back and forth. They sort of um, said they'd look into the case, the case issue, so um, very kindly um, Andy at uh, Fleur sent me this uh, soft case. Now this is, you know, I think a much better, much better choice. It's really nicely made. It's made by um, Shell Case. Very nice quality. It's not, it's not ridiculously padded because I mean this thing's rated for a two meter drop. So you know you don't need a case that's just really padded to death. But you know it's got just about the um, right amount of padding, so it sort of fits in there quite nicely. Um, it's got a carriage strap if you need it. It's got a belt clip. So um, yeah, I think, yeah, th th this is a lot more sensible than the big um, paddy case they um, supply it with. Uh, one of the things I want to look at is um, close-up work. So obviously a lot of people are going to be interested in using this for electronics. So um, I'm just going to look at a, f um, a couple of options to actually make the thing fo focus at a closer distance. Right, I'm just going to take a look at this board. This is about 40 mm square. It's got a couple of DC-DC converters on it. So there's a few things at various different temperatures. Now the um, the normal focus range of this thing is about sort of half a metre or so um, before it starts getting um, blurry. So for a small board it's it's not really um, quite close enough. Now on any camera system there's sort of two ways of making it focus closer. One is to actually just screw the lens further away from the, um, the sensor, which um, it is possible to do on this. Um, the other one is to um, add an external lens. Now of course because it's um, thermal imaging camera you can't use a glass lens, you have to use a lens that's transparent at long wave infrared and the options basically are germanium, uh, gallium arsenide or zinc selenide. Zinc selenide lenses are actually available quite cheaply as um, laser cutter lenses. These are, I, I ordered a few different focal lengths, I didn't really know which one, one, ones would work, great, work the best um, from China. These are about 20 quid, it's about a 18mm uh, diameter lens. They're available in a fairly sort of wide variety of focal lengths from about 22 up to 100 millimeters. Now one of the issues with this is that the um, yeah, there's no obvious way way to actually sort of mount the lens on here. There's, there's a few sort of just various sort of bits of plastic step you could, I suppose, potentially mount something on there. The problem is holding it in place. But you do have this sort of nice sort of rubber outer. So the, the sort of first attempt as a lens holder was simply I just stuck it in the middle of a um, plastic disc. Um, this is actually just a push fix. It was, it was, it was a very tight hole. So if you're doing this as a permanent thing, you could glue it in. But I didn't want to glue the lens until I figured out the uh, ideal solution. So that just drops in, and there's a simple. Um, uh, just simple retaining clip to hold it in place. Now this is a 25mm lens and this, although it, it does work close up, it's actually very, it's almost too close. You know, the working distance of that is about sort of 20mm, so unless you're wanting to really get down to sort of very fine detail, so there's an inductor there. The, all the component leads look quite dark because they're, they're um, obviously silver in colour because of the solder, so they've got very low em emissivity. Um, so they actually appear darker, so although they're obviously at the sort of similar temperature, they appear much darker, which is actually very handy because obviously at the close distance you don't get the benefit of the MSX facility because the camera offset's too high and of course the lens covers in front of it. Obviously you could make a cut out there for the um, other camera, but there just isn't any point because the, the distance is, you know, the geometry is completely wrong. But um, you know, on most boards you've got these silver bits which actually are quite good for um, helping you sort of locate whereabouts you are. So there's sort of an inductor there that's sort of getting quite warm. CPLD and a few other and ends, but so I think this this 25 is a little bit close. But I found that a um, 100 is probably a little bit too far away. So the 100 is not hugely different from yeah you know, the unmodified. I think it's probably a little bit too yeah the field of view is a bit big. And if you're doing a larger board, then might, it, it might actually be useful. But I think if you're looking for small localized faults, you're probably going to want to just move it around the board. So you want, I think you want quite a detailed field of view. Um, so you can actually sort of move it around to find things like shorts and um, tracks and components getting hot. Now this is the second um, attempt at a lens holder. This is just made out of PCB, but also you could laser cut this out of sheet. So it's just got um, sort of three contact points and a sort of uh, a section cut away. So it's got effectively a built-in spring in it to hold it in place. So this um, would just sort of just drop in. You sort of squeeze that, drop it in, and then it holds itself in place. So that, that's a fairly neat solution which um, works quite well. So this is the 50mm um, lens. So that gives you know, the field of view there is about the whole of the width of the board. So I think that's probably a reasonable compromise in terms of, um, sort of resolution versus uh, field of view. Now the other approach is actually to adjust the lens. Now um, 
this lens is actually fairly easily adjustable. It's, um, it screws into a thread into the uh, main body, if you, you've just seen that on the teardown video, and it's supported by there's like a rubber block that sits in front, um, which obviously is part of the shock protection. But that block just provides enough pressure on the side of the lens to you know, make it stay where it's put, but it's not so tight that you can't actually turn it. But the problem is actually, get, yeah, actually getting to it to turn it, because all you've got are these sort of in, inside facing semicircular cavities, which are because they're semicircular, you know, unless something's quite rigid, it's just going to cam out quite easily. So you need something that's a fairly accurate shape. Um, this is the first thing that I did. This was just a piece of um, thick PCB material with some holes drilled and some uh, metal pins and a sort of handle to grab hold of it. Now, this, this sort of works reasonably well. You can get it in there and you can sort of, once it locks in, you can sort of turn it. The problem is that obviously when you're focusing, you're going to want to do it from the front and the problem with this one is you have to hold it in the right angle and actually hold it in place it doesn't grip by itself so and also the fact because this is actually recessed it's actually quite awkward to sort of focus this while you're looking at the screen so um this is, isn't really ideal i think you know the ideal shape because it's recessed is probably some, something conical because you want to see through it um while you're adjusting it um, and so because that lens is recessed so deeply, I think the only solution would be something which actually sort of latched into there and then sort of came out wide enough that you could then sort of, that you could then sort of grab hold of it and um, just adjust it like that or yeah, from the front while you're actually um, looking at this side of it. Right, this is a second attempt. Now what this is made of, this is um, the shell from a PL259 coax connector. I've just sort of cut down a little bit. And I've basically done a moulding using polymorph. Um, if you've not come across it, this is basically a plastic sort of modelling compound, uh, which you just basically put um, put it in hot water, and it, sort of, it it turns into a fairly sort of soft gel-like consistency, and then it sets when it cools down. But unlike things like hot melt glue, it actually sets quite hard. The, the actual material ends up sort of quite hard, so um, you end up with you can get some fairly sort of reasonable. Uh, molding. So I just took the PL PL259 shell, cut a few sort of notches in the end just to give the adhesive something to key key into. And the way I did the molding, because you need to press it quite hard into the um, this cavity to get a sharp mold. So I took took the lens out completely and just put a plastic core in the middle, and then just put the polymorph around the outside and pressed it really hard, sort of holding this in, and then press it really hard to get it really pushed in hard against the um, the cavities and then sort of press once that was done I just sort of pressed this into it and then let it let it cool off um, and then just trimmed all the surplus stuff out and um, mechanically it, it works quite well but it still suffers from the problem that um, obviously because the lens has got quite a wild field of view it does obstruct quite a lot of the camera's field of view. So you can see if I um, put this and on, so the, the other issue is it's not really deep enough, so again, you, you, it's a bit of an unnatural angle. You, you, you're sort of trying to poke your fingers in whilst adjusting it, whilst holding it from the back. Um, so it does obstruct some of the field of view, but yeah, there, there is enough to actually get it focused. Just get that out that way. And the, and the focusing for close-up, once you get the hang of how far to turn it, um, isn't too critical, so you can adjust the distance to some extent to get, get the focus right. And the, the time when it's more important is when you're actually you're returning it to a factory focus, which is um, returning it to a standard focus is quite easy. All you need to do is look at a distant object, for example, the you know the sharp edge of a roof or something. And I've actually marked, put a little mark on there to actually show the position, just to make it easier to um, get back to its normal position. But so if you unscrew this, the further you unscrew it, the closer up it will focus. So that's a um, about a quarter turn which is now focusing at about 100 millimetres or so. That, you know, it's not a super precise um, adjustment. So that's uh, unscrewed about a quarter of a turn and that's focusing at about 100 millimetres or so. So that's giving you a field of view, um, you know, maybe about 100 millimetres wide or wider thereabouts. Obviously the further you turn it, the closer up it gets. So that's half a turn from its normal position. And that's focusing maybe about 50 millimetres or so. And this is with about sort of three quarters of a turn, which is sort of focusing maybe sort of 20 millimetres or so. 
and about the maximum useful distance is probably about a full one full turn from its normal position and that's sort of focusing pretty much level with the um, the front of the rubber it's maybe sort of five maybe ten mil away from the front so we've got probably about a 40 millimeter field of view so you get some fairly sort of you know, reasonable level of detail on that I don't think there'll be much point in getting any closer and one thing to bear in mind with both the lens and the um, one thing to bear in mind with both the um, additional lenses and adjusting the lenses it's quite likely that the calibration won't be correct because obviously this thing's calibrated with its own lens and with its own field of view so as soon as you start messing around with that the, the actual temper indi temperature indications are probably not going to be particularly accurate but um, generally when you're using it for this sort of thing you know you really are you're more interested in you know what's getting hot where, where the problem is rather than the um, absolute temperature I haven't actually done any measurements but it wouldn't be hard to do you know you can actually point it at a, something at an own temperature and then tweak the lens and see if that, that changes, but um, I haven't actually got around to doing that. Right, one of the minor complaints about this camera is it doesn't have any sort of tripod mount. Um, but I was looking, there is, there is actually enough um, room in this battery. Now, the battery, um, this whole thing is the replacement battery, although these can actually be unslipped. The, um, the replacement battery does come with this part, so if you're worried about warranty issues, you just send it back without the battery. Um, some post offices don't let you send lithium batteries anyway, so that's a good, good excuse as any. But there is actually enough space in there, so what I've done is um, I've got one of these. This is a standard 3 8 to quarter in tripod adapter, so it's got a 3 8 thread on the um, outside, which is about 9.5mm. Um, I just machined this down a little bit, um, I haven't got a lathe or anything, I just stuck this on a bolt, stuck it in a pillar drill, and used a file to get it down to about 8mm just to. Um, reduce the size of the hole I've got to make, um, but I've left enough thread on that to, to key it because I'm going to just fill this with um, epoxy to hold it in place. So I've drilled a, um, an 8mm hole, not all the way through, just deep enough to accommodate the um, this. Um, because this is a two-shot moulding with rubber, I actually have had to cut the, the rubber away as well a little bit. So I've just drilled this out so it's a really tight fit into this hole. And then I'm just going to backfill all this lot with, around the, the bottom with um, epoxy to uh, hold it in place so hopefully that should make a a, a reasonable tripod mount right just gonna that sort of that's pressed in place so it's nice and flush now um, I was gonna screw a quarter inch bolt in there just so the uh, thread doesn't get full of epoxy while I glue it all right so that glue is all set so uh, we now have a tripod mount and although not sort of super rock solid, I think that yeah, it's more, more than adequate. Um, obviously, one issue is the lens um, faces slightly upwards, so um, you know, if you want to go look straight ahead, you will need to uh, sort of tilt it forward slightly to get a horizontal um, view. But for the sort of for the time you're on a tripod, I think that's a fairly reasonable uh, solution.